Silence. Peace. Disconnection. For a lot of people who have experienced diving or swimming on the water, this is what the ocean feels like. But for a species living there, it's becoming quite the opposite. NGOs are raising the alarm about noise pollution. Between 2014 and 2019, underwater noise emissions doubled in European waters. The war in Ukraine isn't making things any better. Noise is having devastating impacts. The silent world. This is how explorer Jacques Cousteau described the ocean in his documentary from 1956. Another dive is over. But a lot has changed since then. We have discovered that the ocean is everything but a silent world, and that we humans cannot hear all the things happening down there. I think for our species, humans, the, the best way to understand it is that we live in a predominantly visual world. So the sense of eyesight is very important to us. But when it comes to marine life in the ocean, they live in an acoustic world. That's because in a world mostly in darkness, sound is crucial. Marine species use it to communicate, to warn each other about predators, or to find prey and hunt. Male fish can make sounds to impress a female on a nesting site and even pick a home according to how healthy a coral reef sounds. But at the beginning of the 20th century, humans started to operate on an industrial scale in the ocean, disturbing the delicate balance of natural sounds that have been there for millions of years. And it was many years before the world started paying attention. Recibíamos la noticia de la aparición de varios cetáceos muertos en la playa. It's September 2002, and Spanish and NATO ships are conducting a naval exercise around the Canary Islands. Some hours after the activation of the mid frequency high intensity sonar, more than 10 big whales beach in the area. Early in the morning, specialist in veterinary pathology Antonio Fernandez got a call from the Canary Islands government. La pregunta en ese momento también fue, uno, ¿de qué mueren los animales? ¿Puede ser que las maniobras sean las responsables de la muerte de estos animales? ¿Y por qué solo ballenas de pico? He and his team quickly set about finding the cause of the whale deaths. Lo que vimos fue que los animales presentaban ya muertos unas hemorragias internas. ¿Y cómo se producen las hemorragias? No? Pues bueno, nosotros veíamos también que se presentaban burbujas tanto en el corazón como en los vasos sanguíneos. En 2003, Antonio y el equipo de científicos publicaron sus findings en el journal Nature. The discovery was groundbreaking. The bubbles in the whale system were similar to the ones that human divers develop if they rise to the surface too quickly. Cuando los cifios empiezan a escuchar ping ping, intentan huir, ¿no? Pero vuelven a escucharlo por por otra parte y por otra parte. Y entonces, ¿qué entran? Nuestra hipótesis y creo que es lo que aún se mantiene, ¿eh? Entran en pánico. Y al entrar en pánico Ellos intentan escapar a una velocidad y en unas condiciones que realmente su perfil de buceo se los impide. Y ahí empieza el principio del fin de estos de estos sifios. Algunos resisten y terminan llegando a la playa o algunos mueren y se quedan flotando en el mar. Although this was not the first time a mass stranding had occurred in the world, it was a turning point. The European Parliament adopted a non-binding resolution calling on member states to control and restrict the use of military sonar. 
In 2004, Spain decided to ban its use in Canary waters. But this technology that can detect underwater objects and submarines is still used all over the world today, including in the Black Sea. Between February and August 2022, during the first months of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Turkish Marine Research Foundation, TUDAV, reported a huge increase in dolphin strandings. If you're asking about the whole Black Sea, we had totally over 900 animals stranded. It's actually more than twice the normal year, and in some areas, more than three times. Ocean noise can cause hearing loss. It can disorientate marine mammals and impact reproduction and migration routes. Some species can starve, as noise makes it harder for them to identify prey. Others can become more vulnerable to predators. Ayaka Mahaus Turk explains that the beached animals could be just the tip of the iceberg. Not all the dead animals come up to the shore. We made a rough estimate that probably something like 7,000, 8,000 animals must have died to have the 900 animals stranded. That said, it's important to remember that the Black Sea also faces other issues, such as chemical pollution. Researchers have obtained a couple of samples from the animals, but analysis has not been done yet. After August 2022, the number of dolphin strandings returned to normal, but it's not all good news. I think the animals have kind of evacuated from the area. But again, if you see things on a long-term basis, it means that they cannot go back to their natural habitats, which is bad for them. And sonar is just one of the threats. This is the largest noise polluter. Today, shipping is responsible for around 90% of global trade. It is estimated that noise in major shipping routes has increased 32-fold in the last 50 years. This map shows the distribution of underwater noise emissions from ships in 2019. It is very easy to see that only a few areas in the world are spared. Because of this, some species could be changing the way they communicate. A study by marine biologist Susan Parks discovered that North Atlantic right whales, which typically use lower frequency signals to communicate, had begun to call using higher frequencies in order to be heard over the low hum of ship noise. It's almost like they are shouting to be heard. Now, have you heard about seismic surveys? It's a method used to locate offshore oil and gas reserves by using air guns that produce sound waves. Air guns can be fired every 10 to 15 seconds, and the noise can last for days, weeks, and even months. We talk about sources that go up to 260 decibel. That's hardly imaginable for people, you know, because first of all, sound travels much faster in water than on air. That's a scary, scary thought that it happens to you, you know, in your environment. So how will you survive? You go mad. The sound can be so loud that it can even kill nearby organisms. A study found that all larval krill within a 1.2 kilometer range of an ergon signal were killed. Other activities, such as the construction of offshore wind farms, also create noise that can affect marine animals. And all those scientists originally thought noise pollution was affecting mostly cetaceans, it now appears that at least 150 marine species are suffering the consequences. I think it was Cousteau who said that the silence of the seas and the oceans could be saying now, if they heard it and heard it, that the oceans will never be more silencious. In December 2022, the European Commission set limits for underwater noise. It established, for example, that no more than 20% of a given marine area can be exposed to continuous underwater noise. For experts, the way forward is clear. 
do we really need to continue searching for oil and gas now when the whole world is talking about an energy transition? When it comes to shipping, you have technical potential for improving propeller or hull design, but you can also slow down your speed. The slower you are, you know, you reduce noise levels, but you also reduce um, greenhouse gas emissions. Underwater noise in terms of military activities is is the most complex and difficult um, thing. But when it comes to the potential, it's there we can shut off noise sources. So the good news is that we know what the solution is. If you stop the volume, if you just shut down the source of emitting noise, you remove the problem. Remember the ban on sonar in the Canary Islands? No mass strandings of big whales have happened there since. 